You're listening to international investment advisor Doug Goldstein on the Goldstein on Yelp Show, the financial show where we'll talk about how you can make the most of your money. With all the confusing financial chatter bombarding you each and every day, Goldstein on Yelp will give you the practical information you want and need about living a financially stable life. Here's your host, money maven Doug Goldstein. Okay, we are back. We are talking to Forsan Hussein, who is the Chief Executive Officer of the Jerusalem International YMCA. Forsan started there in June of 2009, so he's, he's uh, just really launching to a great start there. Um, his educational background, he went to Brandeis, which is, by the way, where my wife went. He has uh, two master's degrees from Johns Hopkins and an MBA from the Harvard Business School. So Forsan, I would like to thank you uh, for joining us today. Thank you very much, Doug, for having me. Listen, a lot of people um, have driven by the YMCA on the left side as the King David is on the right side of the road, and they look up and they, they don't really know what it's about and what goes on there, nor what the CEO of such an organization does. Could you enlighten us? With pleasure. The Jerusalem International YMCA is really one of the oldest institutions in the region. It started in 1878, and uh, it's, uh, our mission is, uh, uh, or our vision, rather, is we are uh, an international center for reconciliation and ethical leadership. Um, and the YMCA, in many ways, uh, is divided into two things. The Three Arches Company, which is uh, a company that manages a hotel and a restaurant and a conference center. And you also have the nonprofit organization, which uh, manages the Peace Preschool, the first Peace Preschool, the kindergarten, binational, bilingual, multicultural uh, kindergarten. Garden in Jerusalem. Uh, is, that, is, is that the noise we hear in the background? That's the noise, exactly. These are the happy kids you hear in the background. That is, that uh, is the have, sound of, of, of a peace preschool, okay. Yes, and this, it's this, really the first in the land. started 30 years ago. Right. Um, consists of about 120 children, um, Muslims, Christians, and Jews, and uh, members of the international community. But we also have many vibrant uh, youth uh, programs. Uh, of course, we have, like every other YMCA in the world, we've got a gym. The philosophy of the YMCA is that harmony between body, mind, and spirit. And uh, what sets us apart from other YMCAs is the, uh, the fact that we, did, while we are a Christian institution, we were built on the faith of the three monotheistic religions. So in many ways, you can think of the YMCA as a community center, um, as a place where people meet, especially in Jerusalem, Doug, where there are so many religious uh, uh, differences, uh, cultural differences, political uh, conflicts. I mean, the YMCA in the heart of Jerusalem serves as a safe haven for all these differences. People walk in from all walks of life. How many people do you see walking through the doors? Hundreds of people a day. Oh. We serve, we have about, uh, in our uh, gym, there is about 1,100 people who come um, literally you know, on, a, on a daily basis. So many different people walk in. You see so many uh, uh, colors. You hear at least five different languages on a daily basis from Arabic, Hebrew, English, Amharic, Russian. Uh, not to mention uh, foreign languages uh, walking into our exercise rooms and into our gyms and, and, and do all our of the classes. People, do all of the people who come in, are they, do they pay, uh, are they monthly members? Do they pay yeah. per time? No, most of them are monthly members. We have different memberships. We have uh, a yearly membership. Uh, we've got three-month membership. And we also have uh, day passes. How much of does something like this cost? Uh, about uh, 3,300 uh, shekels. Per... Per, uh, uh, per person. Per, per month, a, month. Or a year? No, a year, a year. A year. year membership, yes. Ah, uh, okay. So it's a, over 3,000 shekels a year. Does that yes. make it difficult for, I mean, certain, you know, groups are obviously not, uh, or apparently not uh, uh, as wealthy as others. Does that make it hard for them to join? No, you know, these are competitive prices, I have to say. Also, we have, we have discounts for students. We have discounts for uh, families. Uh, so, uh, uh, you know, it ranges from 2,700 to 3,300 shekels a year membership. Okay, we are talking to the Chief Executive Officer of the Jerusalem International YMCA, Forsan Hussein, uh, who started there about a year and a half ago. 
we're learning a little bit about what goes on at the YMCA. Of course, not as the this show is a more of a financial show. I'm just curious: are there any uh, financial programs or anything that people who are interested in investing would come to the Y for? Well, and um, in terms of investments, I mean, I think the biggest investment that people can do is. Uh, really try to support the Y. I mean, this is not an in, uh, a place where we receive investments in order to uh, give dividends and, uh, you know, return on investment. The biggest... I mean, uh, again, programming. I was curious if there are programming or helping people with budgeting or investing. Not, or not yet, but this is the direction. We, in our vision, we're, we're trying to create uh, classes to teach, for example, kids from East Jerusalem and West Jerusalem very basic skills of Excel spreadsheet, of budgeting, of business, giving people simple business skills. Uh, again, as an institution and a not-for-profit organization and a community center, we look at the challenges that our community faces. Unemployment is high, Doug, and crime rate is, is increasing, unfortunately. And so in the face of these challenges, one of the things we're trying to do is help the Jerusalem community uh, overcome these challenges by giving them basic skills. Uh, so we don't have those programs yet, but this is definitely the direction where we're headed. I got you. And with your business background, this obviously uh, you have more to add to the equation. Exactly. Certainly a lot of people have been talking about the idea of harmony and peace between the, uh, the, the peoples in the region. Um, one of the discussions and one of the discussion points that comes out is that if there was more economic interrelationship between the peoples, then there would be less reason to fight because there's, there's more to lose. Um, do, you, do you see that? Is that something that you talk about? I am a very a, a profound believer in the theory of economics for peace. I think for generations we've tried the other narrative, the other approaches to peacemaking. Uh, but I think in the end, uh, we have not been um, very active on the economic side of peace. In the end, business people understand the bottom line. And uh, like you said, when there is a common goal and when there's something to lose, I think people tend to be uh, more cooperative. Uh, I think uh, the theory of uh, Shimon Peres of the New Middle East uh, is uh, something that's totally, totally viable. Um, if you take uh, today uh, Palestinians and Israelis, I think, you know, about, if I'm not mistaken, uh, if you remember, maybe in the 1993-4, there used to be 40, 140,000 Palestinians coming to Israel to work in, you know, construction and agriculture, and there used to be a lot more economic stability in the Palestinian territories and also in Israel. Uh, I think the more we cooperate on these issues, on trade, on production, on, uh, on uh, even tourism, I think the, the, the better uh, we will, will end up being. Uh, I really believe uh, that if there is more economic cooperation. So I take, I take, for example, Delta Galil Industries as, as a company. It's true Delta Galil is not doing very well these days. But in the end, this is an Israeli company that operates both in Jordan and in Egypt. I worked for this company uh, three, four years ago. And the great differences that it, it makes is really astounding. Uh, you go to Egypt, for example, to Nasser City, where they're headquartered, and you see a Jewish-Israeli manager walking in a production line where all of them are Egyptian women. Mm -hmm. And those Egyptian women know nothing about the Jews but what they see on TVs. And the TV images that are being portrayed are very, very ugly. Maybe images of occupation, of soldiers, of violence. But then you see the peacemaking in your own eyes when that illiterate Egyptian worker looks up to her supervisor who happened to be Israeli Jewish. And the fact that he provides them with these opportunities to get some money to go invest in their kids' education, to bring food to the table. I think this, this is what it's all about. You don't think, and um, it's actually a good, I, I, it's a very good example. Delta Galil makes, uh, among other things, is involved in uh, rather cutting-edge um, uh, clothing, 
right? And des- design. Yes. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Right, it's, which is very clear. I mean, the, the, the patent that they deal with is, uh, is sort of seamless type of, uh, of garments. Um, this is not the type of thing that I would expect in a Muslim country people would necessarily be very happy about producing. It, it, I mean, so I'm impressed with what you're saying, but I think people, I would worry about that, no? Yeah, well, the thing is, I think none of that, none of what Delta Gilead produces in Egypt is being sold in Egypt. I mean, you know, this is the Ralph Lauren and and Victoria's Secret and and, uh, Hugo Boss, and it all uh, is for for the European and American markets. Okay, so they don't object to it. Yeah. I understand. But again, you know, Doug, think about the tremendous... Uh, opportunities for cooperation. I mean, the Palestinians can provide a great deal of labor, labor force, Mm -hmm. and Israel has a great deal of technology advancement. And I really believe the economies of Israel and Palestine are, uh, not only are they interdependent on one another, and they should be, but also they're so compatible with one another. Think about the, uh, the, the, the resources that we share, be it water or gas or even, even transportation. If we have a better, if we cooperate better on transportation, then the entire Middle East will open up mm-hmm. and think about the great opportunities for commerce and for trade and for tourism. Okay, so let's, let's bring, that back, uh, bring that back home now to what you're doing. We are talking to Farsan Hussein, who is the CEO of the Jerusalem International YMCA. We've actually discussed from the beginning of our discussion about what the YMCA does to perhaps how we might see peace in our day. Um, is there any more information people should, should learn about the Y to get involved and maybe even to, to, to learn about getting involved or how they could find out um, how they might participate or help or, or be involved? Well, yes. First of all, I think uh, we are a, an undiscovered secret of Jerusalem. Uh, allow me to say, Doug, and take it back to the beginning. You know, when the YMCA, this historic building, was inaugurated in 1990, in 1933, Lord Allenby flew from London, and he came here and gave a speech that was heard all over the world. He said, describing the place, he said, here is a place whose atmosphere is peace, where political and religious jealousies can be forgotten, and an international unity be fostered and developed. This became the spirit of the why. And today, our uniqueness is that we are a place where people walk in, they forget about their differences, and they relate to their common humanity. We would love to see as many people as possible. Of course, we have vibrant youth department. We have cultural programs of music festivals, of things that really relate to all the three monotheistic religions of Palestinians and Israelis, Arabs, and Jews. Uh, people can find information on us on the website, uh, www.friendsofjiy, Jerusalem International. Uh, people can also email us at ymca at ymca.org.il. That sounds great. Listen, Farsan Hussein, CEO of the Jerusalem International YMCA, thank you very much. With great pleasure, Doug. Thank you for calling. Bye now. You've been listening to the Goldstein on Gelt Show with money maven Doug Goldstein. Doug's weekly radio show is heard around the world, but if you miss it, you can download the podcast at www.goldsteinongelt.com. The Goldstein on Gelt Show gives you up-to-date financial ideas so you can get on the path to financial freedom. If you'd like your questions answered on the air or off, send Doug an email to doug at profile-financial.com. It's your money for your future, so join Doug every week to build your wealth on the Goldstein on Gelt Show.